The Olympus AF-1, also known as the Olympus Infinity, is a 35mm automatic point-and-shoot produced in 1986. Its claim to fame is that it's the world's first weatherproof camera, offering users a certain amount of protection against the elements. It's plastic, but of a decent quality. Whilst it is a little boxy, it fits nicely in the hand and is surprisingly ergonomic to shoot with. Its looks could be polarising. I admit I kind of like that boxy 1980s no-frill design, which is actually pretty distinctive amongst cameras of the same era. The AF-1 is entirely automatic, offering next to nothing in the way of manual controls. It is auto-exposure, with a surprisingly sprightly autofocus. It also has an automatic flash that is impossible to disable. Apart from the shutter button and sliding door on the front of the camera to protect the lens, the only other button you will find is a focus lock on the rear of the camera. I should have read the manual, as it took me a while to figure out how that focus lock worked. Normally you'd expect to half press the shutter, then press, or perhaps press and hold, the focus lock. Instead, on the AF-1, you must press the focus lock first, which registers the desired focus point, then recompose your shot and press the shutter. Weird, but fairly intuitive once you get in the swing of things. As with Olympus's more modern new range of point and shoots, the main draw here is that little 35mm 2.8 lens, which produces decent ish images, considering its size. In the right conditions, the images are just sharp enough with good contrast. Speaking of those later Mew range of cameras, they're currently very popular with a certain breed of photographer and are commanding relatively high prices on the used market. In part I can see the appeal, they're crazy compact, can slip into a pocket and offer a certain amount of creative control, but are also easy to use for enthusiastic 35mm novices. A Mew 1 will currently set you back around 100 quid, and a Mew 2 200 quid. That's a lot of money when you consider they're really rather average optics, and that you know at some point their electronics will almost certainly fail. At least the AF-1 can be picked up for a more normal £20 to £50, pounds, whilst offering much the same functionality, arguably in a slightly more appealing package. The AF-1 and Muse are very fashionable with street photographers. I can see why, on paper. This makes sense. They're lightweight, compact, automatic, fast and optically OK. In reality, I can think of a million and one cameras that would be better suited to this task, and here's why. First off, with a 35mm lens, you need to get pretty damn close to your subject. If that wasn't bad enough, the electronic shutter is super loud, and the electronic film advance is louder still. On top of that, with speeds going down to 1 30th of a second, there is a high chance for motion blur. If the camera judges the exposure to be too dark still, the automatic flash will ping off without any warning. All of this equates to a street shooting camera that is in no way surreptitious to shoot with. As you will see in many of my test photos, it can really piss off unexpected targets leading to much unwanted attention. Don't get me wrong. I like the AF-1. It's kind of cute and convenient. I just wouldn't use it for street photography. Something like a Konica 3A would be a hundred times more appropriate for that kind of thing. Almost totally inaudible, with a little more reach between you and your target, as well as infinitely more precise optics. I would, however, advocate the Olympus AF-1 as a good general everyday carry. Something to document general goings-on where optical quality isn't paramount. Its size, weight and weatherproofing mean you can take it anywhere and... As long as the price remains low, you won't need to worry too much about mollycoddling it. It would also be well suited to any novices looking to enter into 35mm photography due to its ease of use and built-in flash.